Hey guys, Ian Flanagan here. And if you're at eXp Realty and you are building a revenue share organization, you are in for a treat. In this video, my partners and I really share our stories about how we built our organizations into the thousands of agents. We're gonna bring some of our top leaders onto the call. We're gonna have them tell you a little bit about how they built their organizations and some tips and tricks for you to get out there in the marketplace and really get some traction in building your revenue share organization. So if you like this call, be sure to hit the like button. If you have any comments, drop those into the comments below. Share this with your team members and I hope you get a lot of value out of this particular mastermind call. So hope you enjoy it. Good morning, good morning. Happy Friday, happy Freedom Friday. Pat Hayes here for those of you that are new or that don't know us, I know I've got the a new agent here on the on the call here as well, uh, Matthew uh, from Houston. Welcome to the call, and uh, we do this every single Friday here. Just a little mastermind that we like to put on, just to keep everybody together, share success stories, share wins, share obstacles. You know anything that's going on, and that we normally uh, you know interview uh, a, um, a a special guest that's absolutely crushing it at EXP, either with agent attraction or with selling real estate or with both. You know, a lot of agents are absolutely crushing it doing both. Um, you know, our Q2 financials came out uh, yesterday or, or a few days ago. And, uh, you know, the uh, the stock is shooting through the roof. Of, you know, EXPI is just going crazy. So uh, congrats to all of you guys. We're all, uh, you know, make, making some good money. And, uh, you know, we like to just uh, share success stories and share wins. And, and uh, you know, we normally interview uh, uh, a special guest, but um, I've been getting a lot of text messages lately saying, you know what? I love all the interviews. I love what you guys are doing, but we have a lot of questions. Uh, we only have a few minutes at the end to, uh, you know, um, ask a you know a few questions. Why don't you guys maybe host a mastermind with, uh, you know, a lot of the leaders share everybody's story for, you know, maybe three, four, five minutes, and then kind of open it up for some Q and A so we can all ask our questions um, in regards to issues, uh, you know, that agents are having. I said absolutely. You know what? Let's do it. I think this is a a perfect Friday to do that. And, um, you know, I know this is coming into, you know, recruiting season is coming up here in the next month or two, kind of normally from October um, until about, uh, you know, February or March. So where, you know, people's businesses are kind of starting to slow down and they're really, um, you know, kind of open minded now to start taking a look at a new opportunity if they're looking to make a change. And so this is the time. And so uh, we wanted to put this uh, mastermind together. I know we've got 86 on, so that is awesome. And so I just wanted to introduce myself again, you know, Pat Hayes uh, based out of San Antonio. Uh, with EXP, but uh, we've got a lot of leaders on here today, and I don't want to, you know, uh, hog the, uh, uh, you know, hog the floor, but uh, I want to kind of go around, uh, you know, a few of these leaders here that uh, we put together, and I want everybody to kind of share their story. Everybody's got a story. Uh, not everybody knows everybody. You know, we've got new agents coming on board left and right. We're growing at almost 800, 900 agents now joining EXP every single week. That's right, every single week. Not a month, every single week. I, I say that to a lot of agents, a lot of prospects that I talk to, and I, I tell them, that number and they're like wow you guys are growing by 800 agents a month i said no guys this is a week you know this is a week and so we're absolutely exploding and so this is the time to you know really collaborate together um you know don't be afraid you know turn on those cameras let's have fun we are recording this um and uh, you know i get a lot of text messages every single day almost every single week as well um you know with uh, agents excited about this mastermind and they're trying to get plugged in and they just got a lot of questions. And so I'm only one person. I can only answer so many text messages. It was kind of funny. I went offshore fishing. Uh, uh, when was it? Uh, on Wednesday um, with uh, a uh, broker. I just uh, closed on a, a big house down in uh, uh, Rockport, Texas, a, a big business training facility. And the, uh, the listing agent uh, is a big broker uh, in Rockport, Texas, where I bought the house. And he's got about 15 agents or so. And he's kind of the top dog down there. And uh, he's got a big offshore fishing boat. And so he invited my son and myself to go offshore fishing. We did a 14 hour fishing trip. And of course I lost cell phone service out there for a good 13 hours of it. And uh, I, I came back in town and, uh, and got cell phone service. And I had 177 missed text messages, like 19 voicemails. My voicemail box was full. And uh, my dad sends me a text message and he says, man, you had a great day. I said, oh, we did. And, and I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you made $13,000 in revenue share while you were out there offshore fishing. And I'm sure you probably made over $150,000 in stock because the stock shoot through the roof. I said, wow, you know, that was a good day, right? And so I don't say that to brag. I, I say that, that, you know, that's time freedom. You know, that's financial freedom, you know, as a realtor. And, uh, you know, we're all here to win. We're all here to, you know, build something amazing. And, uh, you know, I want to help every single one of you guys. And that's why we do this. And so, um, you know, let's kind of, uh, you know, open it up. And I just, um, I'll share my story last though, but I know we've got a, 
a few other agents on as well, too. And I just wanted to hand this off to Ian Flanagan because uh, Ian and I, we've got a great story as well. And I just want each of us just to share maybe, you know, our story for five minutes because a lot of agents don't know who we are. And, uh, you know, we're all one team, one dream, you know, team EXP. And so uh, we've got about four or five leaders here on the call that I put this call together a few days ago. And I said, hey, let's do this because we've got a lot of agents that are, uh, you know, really wanting to you know, have a Q&A session. Uh, in regards to agent attraction, and they really want to know kind of who we are and our story. A lot of people don't know that. So um, I'm going to pass the torch over to Ian Flanagan, let him kind of share his story for, you know, three, four, five minutes or so. And we've got a few other guests as well, too, that um, I want them to tell their story. I'll come back, tell my story, and then let's open it up for Q&A. And um, definitely respect everybody's time, but we've got about 52 minutes left. And uh, then we'll uh, uh, pass it on over to uh, leadership, because I'm sure it's going to be a great leadership meeting today um, in EXP World in the auditorium. Uh, about uh, what uh, what happened this week with our uh, Q2 financial. So without further ado, my good friend, Ian, take it away. Thanks, Pat. <clears throat> I'll be really brief. So Pat Hayes is my sponsor. And back in uh, December of 2015, around Christmas time, I started noticing Pat posting this EXP cloud-based brokerage agent-owned business. And just like everybody else, I'm busy. I'm, you know, I was uh, running a big investment company. I had a coaching business. I was traveling all around the country and the primarily in the investing niche. That's how Pat and I met because he was looking to build uh, more passive income through owner financing. And that's how we connected. So I'll just do long story short. My first year at eXp, I enrolled four people, right? A big, uh, a big whopping four. I'm watching you guys that are coming in that are six months, 12 months, two years in building 10 times faster than we ever did five, six years ago because of the resources, the human collateral, the collaboration, the tools. Uh, it, it's just um, not to say it's easier, but there's just a lot more support available to the agents now than there was back then. Um, and I believe now the opportunity is even bigger today than it was five years ago even though there are some early innovators and, and, um, and, and pioneers that have put up some big numbers, I'm seeing you guys that are coming in building faster than we all did. And even our leaders years ago. So out of those one, one people that I enrolled was Chris Saunier, right? You never know who's going to come in the business. Um, and, you know, selling real estate, we can sell real estate in our sleep sideways, whatever, whatever, but to build a business and, and build an organization that, can really give you the time and financial freedom um, is very unique for our industry. So that's why it's so difficult for agents to get their head around the revenue share model because they just don't know what they don't know. Um, by the grace of God, I stuck in there with Chris Saunier and Chris put his head down. He got to work and I started to see the organization grow. And then in, and then in my second year, I had a total of about 25 people. And that was the first month that we saw Rob Flick hit $100,000. And Rob and Gene, if you guys don't know, they're the OGs at the company. They're the ones that built Keller William 25 years ago. They got to experience that massive growth and participate in their system called Profit Share. Those of you that don't know, our founder, Glenn Sanford, actually cut his teeth at Keller Williams. He was the very first um, team leader to expand in the Keller system in seven different markets. And over time, he was looking at his balance sheet and realized that they were paying way more into that company than they really wanted to. So they went independent. So our revenue share system came from um, Keller Williams. But what Glenn did is he basically said, you know what, we're going to remove all the brick and mortar. Uh, we actually never had brick and mortar, but we're going to give this money back to the agents. And he built a company that was agent centric. And that's what you guys are seeing today is massive amounts of dollars coming back to the agents. So in my second year, I had a total of about 25 people. And when Rob hit $100,000 a month, I had realized that I just wasn't paying attention to this. And I watched a guy who was retired come into my market in my backyard and build a million dollar income. And he was out. He went, he moved over to back to Arizona and then him and his wife were traveling around the world. And I've watched this guy make millions of dollars while he was on vacation. How many of you have other friends or entrepreneurs that you know in other businesses that are making millions of dollars while they're on vacation? I only know people at eXp that are doing that. I mean, I have friends in other niches of real estate that are very successful, but never have I ever seen the type of cash flow that's distributed back to the agent. So 17, I put my head down, really started to focus. Um, I've had a lot of attrition on my front line. I'll be vulnerable with you guys. 
I've enrolled 33 people personally, and I've had about 22 of those leave the company. So it's been a little bit more of a challenge for me, but you know, I, I stay focused. I help the team grow. You know, Connor and I put together weekly webinars. We were doing five live webinars per week. So when you when you ask those questions about duplication and getting your team to to invite agents and all that, you know, we realized that doing webinars was a way that we could bring people in from all over the country and the world. And then I was doing a weekly lunch and learn here in my local market. So we had a live lunch and learn local. And then we had five live webinars and that was what really propelled our team to continue to grow. I saw it hit hundred. Then I saw it hit 250. Then it hit 500, which blew my mind. And now I'm over 1200 agents. Um, and it's just incredible what's happening and the talent and the level of people that are coming into the business is just incredible. So I'm here to help you guys. Um, I've learned a lot. I'm still a student. I'm learning every single day. I'm trying to become a better version of myself. So that's something that I'm really focused on right now is the personal development, the self-development, the, the congruent self-talk that's in my mind, because I know a lot of you are having the same challenges that I went through, right? Can I do this? Why doesn't anybody listen to me? I can't believe that these people aren't interested in EXP, right? That, that script that plays in your mind is something that you're going to have to deal with. And what I mean by deal with is you focus on personal development and your goals of what you're trying to accomplish and that noise goes away, but it, it's very challenging. So building a revenue share organization, it can be whatever you believe it to be, right? I love it. What, it, what you, we've all heard the saying, right? Whatever you believe to be true is your reality. If you believe you can't, you can't. And if you believe you can, you can. So this is more of a mindset game and also the value that you're presenting and offering to other people. And that's the biggest shift that I can really say right now. And I just started a new audio book from, uh, it was a recommendation from Jeff and Amanda Whitespear that we, we interviewed them a couple weeks back. They're, they're, they're mega icons, they're five-time icon agents. They're on track to sell over 300 homes this year. And Amanda said, look, gap selling was an incredible resource to help us attract other agents. I'm not gonna go into the premise of the book, but it's all about pain and pleasure and all that. And um, so that's just a little bit about my story. I've been in the company almost six years now with Pat Hayes. I'm a quarter of Pat Hayes' uh, organization. So Pat's right at 4,000, I'm at 1,200. It's growing at about hundred agents a month and I've never, I never imagined that it would, this would be happening. So it's definitely giving me that time freedom. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do on my part, right? There's a lot of monetizing that I've got to do to continue my journey with the company. So I'm here to help. That's a little bit about myself. So love it. Love it, Ian. Love it, Ian. Well, uh, you know, thanks for, uh, you know, and, and thanks for not giving up, man. You know, I know it was hard enough back in the day. And yeah. You had a lot of things going on, man. You had a lot of distractions. You had businesses. You had business partners. You were trying to unwind and untangle businesses and, yeah. and you know, just try and kind of have, you know, get some time to do this. And, um, you know, guys, I, I, I met Ian, you know, whenever I was first, uh, you know, uh, getting into the business almost eight and a half years ago. And uh, I was wanting to kind of start growing my business in regards to, uh, uh, you know, becoming, a, you know, more of a uh, investor friendly realtor so I could help out not, not only myself, but, you know, my other clients that wanted to, you know, start buying properties and buying and holding and owner financing properties. And so I met Ian and, you know, I became a student of, uh, of Ian's and that's how we connected. And whenever I joined EXP, he was one of my first phone calls. And so we connected and, uh, you know, I showed him the business model and he got it. And, um, you know, he said, hey, I'll join, but I've got a lot of other things going on. And, um, you know, he started kind of seeing my success. And then he was like, wow, you know, I, I'll never forget that one phone call. You know, he's, uh, Ian was like, hey, so how much are you making now in revenue? Share? I was like, $4,000 a month. And he was like, well, okay, all right. You know, you know, hey, that's a lot of money. But then again, that's not a lot of money if you're really working a lot at it and, uh, you know, spending a lot of time. And so, um, you know, he, uh, he could have given up numerous times and he never did. And, you know, Ian, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks so much for, you know, being a runner because I run with my runners. And, uh, you know, finally he said, hey, you know what, I'm ready to, I'm ready to give this a, a, another try and, and, and really step up and do this. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we went balls to the wall for a few years and, you know, now look where he is. You know, he's got a, uh, an organization of over 1400 agents now, you know, and it was all because of, you know, really one 
uh, you know, you know, one agent really stuck in there. And I want to pass the, uh, the the ton over to uh, Chris Sonier because he's got an amazing story as well, too. And, um, you know, he loves passive income. And whenever he saw this, uh, you know, whenever Ian showed it to him, he immediately got it. And so, uh, uh, Chris, uh, if you're there, uh, turn on uh, turn on your mic and unmute yourself and turn your camera on and, and share your amazing story, because I know, you know, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of good things have happened to you. Uh, you've been blessed with uh, you know a lot of great opportunities and a lot of great decisions that you've made early on in your career with stock and with apartments and with buying and holding and with investing and all that stuff. But you're building this thing out because you see how big this can be. And so share with the group your story. So take it away, Chris. Okay, thanks, Pat. He's got to follow Ian. You know, we're a hard act to follow. But um, he saw I I met Ian. Um, you know, over five years ago, and we met at a little networking happy hour um, for real estate investors. And then I actually signed up for a a seminar that he and his partner were doing. And I'd heard some rumblings by the XP, but kind of like, you know, just kind of brushed it off. But I got to a point where Ian and I were just chatting in a, um, his partner was up on stage and we were just chatting in the aisle um, outside the room kind of during a break and everything and talked about EXP he wasn't pushy at all about it but just kind of talked about how he made a switch and once I saw it and really did it I think I was probably one of Ian's easiest recruits I had a fair amount of questions but um, I had a benefit in that when I was at Dell during my corporate career I used to one of my roles was I used to help integrate some some cloud-based acquisitions that we did and I was responsible for a lot of the financial modeling um, and integrating it into the company going forward, seeing how it would impact our bottom line. So I, um, one thing I learned is that these companies, very high fixed costs, relatively low um, variable costs. So once you get that past that break-even point, they scale to profitability very, very quickly. And so I saw that potential in EXP and I said, you know, this is probably a pretty good opportunity. Now, I had no idea it was going to get this big this quick. You know, it, it exceeded my wildest expectations, but I knew it was going to be good. So um, I got right to work. I had, I was a new agent. I was, um, I'd been licensed 10 months and this was my third brokerage when I joined. And I didn't really know many realtors other than some investors with a license. I, um, I had no sales background, no marketing background. I was, I was basically a flipper with a license. And, but um, I had a lot of passion for, for, for this, both for um, what it could do to, for my family and I, and also for how I could help other agents, you know, escape the, the roller coaster of commissions and, you know, just being um, the challenges that the traditional realtor career um, so many people face. So I went right to work. And at the time, of course, we had no, we didn't have the corporate presentations. We did not have the um, the masterminds that we have here. You know, it's kind of like it's sort of like the Wild Wild West. You think that's a fair description of it, Pat? And Ian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Percent. Yeah. You know, so it was just sheer force, and um, and I did a lot of things wrong, but you know, just tried to continually learn and get better. Um, you know, following the patterns of you, Pat, and Ian, as well as like Rob Flick and some of the other great folks in our upline and just kind of got better. And I think one thing that um, a couple of things that I think really helped me. So I was doing a lot of um, single family investment at the time up in um, Sherman Denison. It's about an hour and a half away from my house. And I just had an epiphany one day and said like, you know, is this the best use of my time? And I thought like, you know, I should be houses. Don't go get other houses. But agents do. So I just basically shut down that entire business and said, I'm going to focus, go all in agent attraction and do this and just really dug into it. And, you know, I had, um, I had a real eye towards building passive income, even if it's sacrificing current income. So, you know, even sacrificing current sales, sacrificing the, the investment income, I said, you know, I'm going to build this thing for the long term because. If I can invest now, it's gonna. I'm gonna have a lot big, bigger trees in the future. And so, you know, similar to Ian's story, um, you know, probably the first guy I, I recognized that needs to 
to, to hear this and learn about it was Connor. And so it's kind of interesting that um, Ian and I were over at a, um, a, a wealth chart building workshop with, with Rob Flick at Plano. And Connor lives in Plano. And all of a sudden, I connected dots to like, hey, I need to introduce you guys. So we actually um, got him to meet us at a Mexican restaurant around the corner and everything. He was not impressed at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor didn't want to hear it. We 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 tried to we tried to wrangle Connor in for a couple of years. Like just like a lot of high entrepreneurs are busy, they're they're focused uh, on what they're working on at that moment, and he wasn't necessarily open at that time. But over time, he became open. Yeah, and, and I could. Um, I think one of the things that's really helped my success over time. I think I'm bringing in my 50th agent right now, but. Um, it's really to follow up because, you know, I don't know how many of y'all know Gene Fre Frederick or have heard from him, but he talks about, you know, your gate of change. You know, if your gate is closed, there's almost nothing you can say to change somebody's mind and get them to listen and right. be open minded. But when it's open, you know, it's, it's a lot easier discussion. So I can't tell you the number of agents I've approached when their gate is closed, you know, they're just, you know, you can tell them you got the cure for cancer, you know, you're going to help them um, in numerous ways and everything, and their life will be so much better, but they're just not having it, okay? So, but if you look at the stats, you know, about a third of, of agents change brokerages every two years. So the goal really is to be top of mind when that happens for that person. So yep. I just got really strong on following up and, and I really focus on people I know, like, and trust, you know, rather than just try to stack on um, anybody, you know, it's like, hey, I want these people to be part of my family. I want to be business partners with them for life. You know, I really care about them. And, you know, I feel incredibly blessed to have what I have. And I want to help you do the same thing. Yep. And, Love. you know, I think people can see the difference between if you're just trying to, to, to stack numbers and everything, whether, whether you really you know, trying to help people. So, so make sure you're bringing in people that are, are good people that you like, you know, I look at it. I hope that it's a marriage for life for everybody I bring in and, you know, just follow up with them, you know, people, you know, it, like um, when I'm bringing in, you know, she, she was going through a divorce and had a lot of other issues when I first started talking to her, she liked what she heard, but you know, there were just too many other issues in the way. So it wasn't a good time. So, you know, we just became friends, stay in touch every now and then. And Pat, I know you're really good at this too. I mean, you've had some that have happened over five years. And, you know, it's just, um, if, if you hang out with people long enough, become friends with them, and they see you're having fun, you're having a lot of success and everything, chances are they're going to want what you have over time, yep. right? Yep. Love it. Love it, man. Chris, you, you're, you're such a good, yeah, I mean, it, this is truly like family meeting. You're such a good friend and a, a good example and a role model and uh, very educated on our business model and the stock and, you know, all that good stuff, man. So I just wanted to say, uh, you know, thanks so much for what you're doing and, and uh, you know, your success and uh, you, you definitely deserve it. And, you know, I know Connor's not here, but um, I want to pass it on over over here real quick to Brent Phillips because I know, I know we definitely want to get to the Q&A part of this, but, uh, um, you know, uh, Brent's one of our good friends and, uh, you know, he's got an amazing story as well, too. And so, uh, Brent, uh, uh, I just want to pass this on to you real quick, maybe two or three minutes, and then we'll get to a Mike Sherrard. I'll uh, share my little introduction, and then we'll save the rest, uh, um, you know, hopefully 20, 25 minutes or so for Q&A. But uh, Brent, uh, share your, uh, uh, you know, your success and, uh, you know, your uh, story, uh, uh, you know, to the crowd here real quick. So give it up for Brent. Brent, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, full-time real estate investor really is my main thing. I've been doing about 15 years. And um Long story short, I was at a speaking event up in in, uh, in Dallas about three years, about three years and one month ago, and uh, actually a little bit longer than that. Uh, and so I, I never knew Connor. I think I had heard his name a couple of times, maybe saw something on social media uh, and uh, I knew enough that he was a real estate investor. So he sponsored the event that I was speaking at and he started talking about eXp Realty and uh, just a very quick i mean like a 30 second elevator you know pitch and uh got my attention 
we click, quickly connected. He had to leave. And um, I think he's, you know, he did what he tells everybody not to do. He, he think he sent me a couple of videos, right? To watch. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm a busy guy. My wife and I, like, I'm just a busy guy. And we've, you know, personally and professionally with a real estate business and with uh, a big family like kids. And I saw it. And I remember when I, when I, when I saw it, I was like, crap, you know, I'm like, I don't have time for this, but I, I need to make time for this. So I sat down with my wife. I'm like, I want you to watch this, but I want you to, I want you to tell me all the reasons I shouldn't do this. Right. We're too busy, blah, blah, blah. Um, Cause I'm like, you know, entrepreneur, like you name it in real estate, I've done it, done everything. And, um, and most of it I've done pretty well. So she, she sat down, she's like, no, you need to do it. So, um, so long story short, you know, called Connor and uh, we quickly became fast friends. And then we took a vacation together like a month or two later. We were in Cancun and kind of uh, really solidified things there. And uh, for me, guys, like because I know there's probably a lot of real estate investors on here. And for me, the biggest thing was, you know, obviously the rev share. But I was already uh, meeting, you know, I already knew so many agents. I was already talking to so many agents. I was sitting here texting with an agent, you know, right now. And so for me, it was, I have all these relationships that, um, that, you know, were great, you know, for, you know, friendship, but, uh, I want more money in my bank account, you know, and if they weren't sending me a deal, then if they weren't sending me a deal, then, you know, they weren't adding value to my business. And I wasn't really adding value to their business. It was just like a relationship. And, um, and so I saw as like, man, I can now monetize all these relationships, you know, for me and my family and my, my companies, but also add value to them with all the benefits of EXP, you know, and uh, it's been a, it's been an amazing ride where, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's a, it's a part-time business that, maybe here in another year or two, I'll have to reconsider if it gets more of my, my time, but I've got 200 something active agents and it's, um, it's just a nice income stream that's growing every month. I, uh, uh, I do a lot of production, you know, on, on my, our investment. So I've been able to hit icon three years in a row. So I've yes, got a good, good, good. I was that's hoping you were going to say that Brent. I know I'm getting ready to say that for you. Talk about any of your like, <laughs> Guys, Brant Phillips is a badass mamma jamma in his market. Three times right. icon agent. Come on. Well, look, what I what I don't tell a lot of people this is, you know, some people get bogged down with the day to day stuff. Like I don't even know how to do a listing. To be honest, I don't. I don't know. I don't have my Sky Slope login. I don't know all that stuff. You know, You're but if the girls, owner, you don't need to. You, 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 you got care. people for that. Yeah. Yeah, I got people for that. And that's what I try to do, you know, with agents is like, like, man, let me, you know, I did the whole thing where I was just, you know, pounding on them, like just trying to recruit, 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 took a step back. And so now it's just like, man, how can I help you? How can I grow your business? You know, masterminding. I just came on a, back from a three day mastermind in Tennessee, uh, real, just big group of real estate investors. But obviously they see what's going on. They're asking questions and it's better you know, people are like, hey, can you help me? Can I talk to you about that? Then you've got their attention rather than pounding on when they're not looking for it. So that's what I just try to do is, you know, make as many connections, get on one-on-one -on -one situations. I Connor still comes down. Uh, he comes down to my, my house every weekend. We, my kids don't, I mean, every, every month he comes down, we put on the schedule. Uncle Connor's coming to town, kick one of the kids out of their bed. Connor takes the room. And we just go sit down with people. Mastermind, he was down last week. We've got three or four agents onboarding as we, well, not all onboarding, but committed. And we're working through that process with them. Um, just adding value, building real relationships. And then once, once you do that, it's much easier to get them there signed you go. up. You know? There you go, man. You nailed it right there on the head, man. Adding value, helping agents out. That's how you... That's how you build a successful revenue share organization, guys. That's it. You know, it's, it's, it's all about relationships. You know, it's all about relationships. So, hey, Brent, congrats to you, man. Three-time icon agent, man. You're crushing it. You're killing it. Thanks for everything that you're doing. 
And yes, I'm going to get with you today because we're going to confirm um, our uh, presentation in September. Whenever my dad and I are going to come to Houston, we're going to be doing a big presentation there. Let's freaking blow it out of the water. And then we're going to be doing some KB core training. So I'm going to finalize that. Uh, and uh, I'll get I'll get back with you today about that. So uh, looking forward to that. So, all right, we got one more powerhouse here real quick. I want to introduce this rock star here. Uh, if you guys don't know who this guy is, Mike Sherrard, he's absolutely crushing it. He is growing, is exploding. I don't know how he's doing it, but this guy is a machine and he's got systems in place. And if you guys need help, he's here to help us all out. That's what he, that's what he does. And um, he is definitely having a lot of fun. And without further ado, my good friend, Mike Sherrard. Mike, take it away, my friend. What's going on, guys? Super pumped to be here. Um, I'm going to get straight to it because this is about you guys, not about me. I want to get to this freaking Q&A and I'm stoked to answer your questions. So I'm going to keep it. Cole's note, short, sweet. Um, been in real estate for four and a half years. Was a top producer. Hated chasing the next deal. Realized that I was a 24th agent at my last brokerage. Helped them grow to 130 agents just by being a producer. And we all know success follows success. And being active on social and other people want that as well. And I got zero for doing that. Um, so I realized after shooting Connor's ass down and telling him I never want to look at EXP that after we built a good relationship with each other, maybe there's more to this story. And when I started understanding and looking at EXP less of an attraction model or a production model, more of a model that allows you to get compensated more for doing the same thing you would do at any other brokerage, that's when I started looking at, okay. And then when I started realizing you're stacking seven tiers of value for free, it was game over. So I joined EXP 15 months ago. Uh, I've now got 185 FLA. I've got the most FLQAs in the company at 77. I've got 500 yeah. agents as of today. Um, and we're bringing on the number, the largest brokerage in Canada next month. And I'm just super pumped to start traveling, having a bunch of fun with you guys, helping you guys explode and uh, see what we can do because I want to make sure we get a thousand agents by the end of my second year. Um, and I think we, with the people that are coming on board in the next two months, which I have to keep on the down low, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is going to happen. So super grateful for my incredible upline that we've got on this call here. Couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, Patty Hayes coming in freaking clutch on some of the heavy calls we need. And uh, that's what we're doing out here trying Love to pay it. the bills and rev share is certainly hey, doing the trick. Connor just jumped on. He's got a oh, shit. so Connor's tell, here. Tell the story a little bit about how you and Connor met as brief as possible and why yep. you chose Connor. Yeah, definitely. So I had a little tiny YouTube channel with under a thousand subscribers. And I saw Connor with his fluffy little hedgehog hair, and he had like 35,000 subscribers. And I'm like, damn, I want to leverage this guy's audience. I'm going to reach out to him. And I commented and sent this guy a freaking message once a day for like two and a half months straight. And he ignored me and shut me down every single time. And then one day he's like, okay, let's hear what you want, you little weasel. So I got on a call with Connor and uh, he's like, what do you want? And uh, we just, I was like, we should collaborate on YouTube. So he had me on his channel. We got along really well. I had him on my channel. We got along even better. And after that, you know, we just started building relationship and realizing, shit, we think very similarly. We've got similar goals, similar dreams, similar work ethic and style of business. And then when I started taking a step back and realizing, oh, shit, my broker is my actual best friend, but I've got a partner that actually will help me get to where I want to be 10 times quicker. All right, let's separate friendship from business. And now let's start looking at the future. And by the way, that broker, because lesson to everybody on this call, when you leave a brokerage, don't burn a bridge because now that same broker is rolling 130 agents under me October 1st. So um, now we're out here just uh, having a bunch of fun, shaking things up and trying to live the dream. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it, dude. That is awesome, dude, Mike. And I can't wait to see you in Dallas. We're going to have so much fun. And uh, man, you're absolutely crushing it. I'm so proud of you. And uh, I can't wait to mastermind together and have some cocktails with you and just give you one damn big hug because you are changing the game right here. I don't know how you're doing it, but there again, right? It's, it's all about relationships. You and Connor built an amazing relationship and you guys are freaking just running together full steam ahead. 
and I love it. So that is awesome. All right, guys, let me just share my quick story for about a minute or two. Then we're going to open it up for Q&A for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, so Pat Hayes here in San Antonio. Uh, been in real estate for about eight and a half years. Started my career at a small boutique independent brokerage firm. First year as a single agent, I sold about $3.2 million in production. Really found my passion selling real estate. Wanted to go to, the, go to the next level and leverage myself. Well, the only way for me to do that back then was to become a traditional team leader. So I became that team leader, hired two buyer's agents. In second year, I did $12.5 million in production my second year in real estate with my team. And at the end of my second year, December of 2015, I got a life-changing phone call from my mentor and sponsor, Scott Lewis, wanting me to have an open mind to take a look at a new business model that was disrupting the real estate industry and changing the way that agents were being compensated. I said, sure, you know, I do have an open mind and I had never heard of eXp. I wanted to know who was coming into my market. And so I took a look at the model. I met Scott Lewis, I met Gene Frederick and I met Rob Flick. I didn't know who any of these guys were, right? But I heard them, I listened to them, I heard their stories, right? And I took time to meet with them to really figure out what this eXp thing was all about. What, what were they talking about? Why were they so excited? Why did they sell all of their franchises in their regions from Keller Williams and come out of retirement to start launching this eXp model um, late in their career? You know, it, 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 I knew it must be something really good. So I sat down with them. Gene Frederick literally drew it out for us on pieces of paper that I still have. We call it his napkin presentation. And he showed me this model and I was blown away, right? Just like what Mike Sherrard was doing, I was doing that exact same thing at my boutique brokerage firm. I was helping them grow their business, their flag, their model, right? And their brand. And so whenever I joined that boutique brokerage firm, I was their first agent. I helped them grow their business to start their agent count to 65 agents in a little over two years. And all they compensated me was Starbucks gift cards, right? Now I get nice, healthy, fat revenue share checks every single month. And so fast forward, I've been able to personally sponsor 50 agents to the organization. Out of those 50 agents, it should hit 4,000 agents today. Um, spanning 48 states, five Canadian provinces, and 10 countries. And real quick, Ian, if you'll let me um, share my screen real quick, I just want to share my back office real quick with you guys. Um, not to brag, but only to motivate you guys, because I want to show you, uh, you know, how powerful this is, right? So I've been with EXP since December of 2015, and I made my first $1 million in revenue share last year, my fifth year at EXP. And uh, it's on track to probably hit $1.5 million just in revenue share this year alone. So let me share my screen real quick. And again, guys, this is not to brag. This is only to motivate you because you know what? If I can do it, you guys can do it. I only had two years of real estate sales experience whenever I joined eXp. And let me refresh this here real quick. And I didn't have a big following, right? So I personally, I got one agent coming on board that should hit the dashboard today. So 50 agents out of those 50 agents. Um, I've got 25 that are qualified right now for this month, but out of those 50 agents, it's grown into almost 4,000 agents, uh, you know, spanning 47 states, five Canadian provinces, and 10 countries, paying me a revenue share check last month, my biggest one, uh, for the month of July of over $165,000, and it's already on track for the month of August of over $123,000, so guys, I am here to help you. We are here to help you. That's why we do these calls. And again, let's open it up. That's my story. We got 20 minutes left here, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Let's open it up here for some Q&A. Let's have some fun, right? I know we still have 99 agents on the call. We can't all just open up the mics at once, whatever. But, uh, you know, who wants to go first? You know, turn on those cameras. Let's have some fun. Let's collaborate together. This is being recorded. I know we probably can't get to every single person's questions, but let's open it up. You got a team. You've got 99 agents here to help you grow your business. So what can we do to help you? We're here to help and let's have some fun. So who's got the first question? Go ahead. I got a question. Yeah, man, go ahead, bud. What's up, Jordan? Hey, hey what's going on? The first hey, hey, off, just, just tell everybody where you're from and how long you've been with EXP. Yep, from um, Texas and Austin. I've hit one year today. And Mel and I hit financial freedom as well this month. So our freedom number I hit. Congratulations, man. You rock. You, did you rock? You're crushing. I see you out there on social media. And you're absolutely crushing, man. And it was great to see you there in Nashville. Likewise. It's super inspiring for you guys. Thank you all for sharing this. And first off, my question is, how do you guys find these big brokers to kind of attract to your team? Who want, Mike Sherrard, you want to take that one, buddy? Yeah, brokers are interesting. Brokers, um, brokers are a fun, a fun journey. But again, I think the thing that most people, you know, need to understand with brokers is 
it, at the end of the day, it all comes down for the numbers. So for example, we're bringing over this broker of 130 agents and the first kind of step in position that you need to start with is being able to properly present the model from a broker's perspective and an agent's perspective, right? From a broker's perspective, the pros and cons, the pros of EXP is they get to retain everything that is beautiful about being a broker, but they get to mitigate and get rid of all the nonsense, the bullshit and the adult daycare that they used to previously have. So it's framing it in a sense of you get to reduce, you know, Connor and I talk about this all the time. The decisions that somebody needs to make is, will it help you make more money? Will it reduce your time? And will it reduce your stress? So EHP is a vehicle that allows you to now expand your geographic location instead of being restricted to one market. Instead of long-term selling your brokerage for half of what you expect you're going to sell it for, you can retain what you're doing. And by the way, the big statement that gets them to get overboard is say, Hey, John, Mr. Broker, uh, what would happen right now if you left on vacation, deep sea fishing with somebody like Pat for three months, didn't answer a single phone call, text or email? What would happen to your brokerage? Do you think your agents would be impressed? Oh, great. Now let's look at the fact that we've got people making 360000 during that three month period without having to have that liability and stress. But then you have to present it from the agent's perspective. So whenever I present it from brokers, I go through the presentation and I'm doing it simultaneously twice at once, where I'm painting it from their perspective, then the broker's perspective. Once they understand the opportunity and how it benefits their agents and their broker, then you have to get to the numbers. The only thing that will bring a brokerage over is the math. I've run 17 different spreadsheets with Deb Playman, one-on-ones with Glenn Sanford, Jason Guessing, and Dave Kennard in order to map out the numbers to structure mega icon team for this brokerage to actually come over. So it's been a six month journey but once you get to the numbers and paint the future opportunity, that's why the call with um, Chuck Fazio is important, is these brokers need to understand sometimes you have to slow down to speed up, right? The analogy I like to use is how does a restaurant take their business to the next level? They have to shut down for two months, renovate the restaurant, revamp the menu, and then grow. Well, don't you think they're going to fucking hate shutting down for two months and losing business? Yes, they're taking a step back to speed up. Yes, your brokerage might lose 100K in the first year, but you're going to make that 10 times over the next three years. So it's step one, get them on board with the opportunity. Step two, understand the numbers. Step three, position them for success long term and help them understand the mindset of how to actually apply EXP to the fullest extent. Boom. Mike, nailed it. Love it. All right, next question. Who's up? Don't be shy. We've got 98 agents on. Hi, how are you guys? This is for you guys. Who is that now? Um, this is Jennifer. My last name is Norbitz. How are you guys? Hey, good, Jennifer. How are you? Um, I'm actually with EXP Portugal, but I'm located in Sarasota. Awesome. I am a absolute, almost a retired chiropractor of 20 years. So I am going into real estate brand new. And if you guys could give me five like just and I, I'm hearing some things you know like make the list of a hundred people get started with webinars per week go ahead and do like lunch and learns those types of things but if I had five things that I could do every day to build the business what five things would that be Ian do you want to take this one I mean it's a contact sport right it's like no different than building a database of sellers or buyers it's a nurture it's a relationship it's a reach out like I've been studying this for quite some time um, just for my own personal development. But what I've come to realize is there's two different approaches. You have a direct approach and an indirect approach. You can be a little bit more direct with people that you know, that already know, like, and trust you because you already have that relationship. So when you call that particular person, it, it's the questions of, hey, how's it going? Da, 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 da. Hey, listen, have you actually seen what's happening with this company? Do you, have you learned about the business model and the compensation plan? And then the Brent Gove script is, hey, stay where you're at forever. But would you honestly give me an opinion about this particular business model? Because I respect your opinion as a professional. That's a direct approach. Calling somebody or, or connecting with someone that you do not know, you have zero relationship. That's a different type of, 
um, that's an indirect approach, right? That's more of a needs analysis approach to that particular person, which is, hey, how's business going? How's your life going? Hey, how long have you been in the business? Do you invest? You know, those types of probing questions, you know, what challenges are you facing? Yeah, you know, you have to take more of a needs analysis approach and that's where content and value and coaching and all these other tools that we have um, starts to become like, now you're trying to help somebody get what they want, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all striving for something that we want, right? It's either we're, we're, we're trying to run away from something or run towards something. And it's no different with recruiting an agent attraction. So you, you gotta kind of have to look at it on, um, do I already have a pre-existing relationship with somebody? Then I can be a little bit more direct and invite them to learn about it. But if you're hitting people cold right upside the head with it, you're, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get some traction. So um, it's really interesting. I wouldn't necessarily say five things to do, but it's obviously number one, make contacts, right? You know, give yourself a per day number of how many people you're gonna reach out to because the process is speaking curiosity and then inviting them to learn. And then you connect them with a third party, right? That is the, the three-step process. That nurture curiosity can be five years. It can be two years. Pat just brought over somebody six years later yep. because they were finally curious and open to learn. So then we move them through the process, right? You get them in front of a presentation. It may be a private one-on-one -on -one webinar. It could be a group webinar that a lot of our teams do. And then as soon as they come off that webinar, you're setting the next step or you're, you're having a third party, someone in your team, it doesn't matter. Um, answering those questions and you're just moving them through a process and you have to understand it's on their time, their decisions. It's all about them. You can't pressure somebody. You can't get them to accelerate. And we all love that call. To like, Hey, I'm, um, I'm ready to switch brokerages. Can you help me out? That's the one we, that we, we love and want, but that would be my suggestion is to really stay focused on the database of agents, following up with those agents, and then trying to find ways to add value any way you possibly can. I mean, we have a roster of incredible people at our company. And if you know someone that you're talking to is a $10 million producer and they're trying to get to 20 or $30 million as a production, right? There's people at our company that are doing 100, 300, 400 million in production, right? Find a training that they're doing, invite that agent, right? But you gotta edify them. You're like, hey, hey, you know, agent A, you know, hey, we have an agent that's doing a, a presentation here locally or on the web at, you know, Thursday at three o'clock. They're a $50 million producer. They run a team of five agents. They're going to be talking about how they run their marketing and farm their, their local market. Would you be open to come check out this training? Right. So you're trying to connect people for what they're looking for and what they want to what we have. But until you identify a pain point or something that they want or their challenge, it doesn't matter if you have the winning lottery ticket or the cure for cancer. You're just another gnat, right? Because we're all getting bombarded with marketing messages, right? All our information is public record. All day, every day, I'm getting spam phone calls and text messages. So we're kind of immune to it. So to really kind of cut through the noise is the personal connection and then the value. So I would say focus on building relationships with people at eXp. In the cloud, the icon trainings, they're brilliant. Now I love how they're, they're labeling icon series. Brand does one on investors. And, there's, and then these, these icons are doing these recurring trainings like Elizabeth Riley's in Austin, Texas. She's a $30 million producer. She's probably the number one female earner in eXp. She brought in Jean Frederick. Her, her revenue share is probably what? 400,000 a month. Oh yeah, she just and opened she up her second. Yeah, she, she just oh, finally opened up her seventh level. So it's probably, so a, I would say it, it, it's probably four to $500,000 a month. I mean, think about that. Like that is insane money. But yeah. Elizabeth is a giver. She is passionate about helping agents. So she has yeah. a group called Power Girls. So if you're talking to a high level producer, that's a female, right? You've got to share the stories of the bigger females because people want a trajectory and high producers know for them to get to the next level, they got to collaborate with people that have bigger businesses. That's right. And the ceiling does not end at our company. Like that's it right. is incredible the amount of professionals that are at our company. So I would say that take some time to learn the stories of other people and share those stories with your prospects and invite them to come in and learn. Invite yep. them to a session that will help them get where they want to go. Love it. Good job, Ian. And then also, I know, uh, you know, we're, you. we're running short on time. We got about nine minutes or so here, but uh, a lot of agents are, you're probably wondering, you know, hey, what videos do we send? What scripts do we send? 
I'm going to put a link in the text chat right now. Go to BrentGove.com. BrentGove.com. If you guys don't know who Brent Gove is, man, hit him up on Workplace. Tell him what's up. He is, I think, the third largest. He's got the third largest revenue share organization. Uh, at, yeah, I think he's got close to um, probably 10,000 agents now. Uh, BrentGove.com. There's a ton of information there. There's a ton of scripts. There's a ton of videos to watch about, for one, how to sell more real estate, right? And then also for two, how to, um, you know, uh, how to build a massive revenue organization. So BrentGove.com, uh, you know, put that into your phone, save that to your notes, send that out to your team, go there and watch every single video, watch it two, three, four, five, whatever times, um, and uh, start educating yourself on everything about EXP. That's, he builds this not just for him and his team, he builds this for everybody, right? And so BrentGove.com, amazing resource right there for everybody to use uh, and help you be successful for one, sell more real estate and for two, for agent attraction. So, all right, we got a few more minutes here. Let's open it back up here for some Q&A. Who's got another question? Hey, Pat, I've got one. It's Mark Chambers. What's up, Mark? Hey, buddy, how are you? Good. Hey, this might be for Mike to answer, but I've got yeah. two different folks that I've got a good relationship with who are on teams or I'm sorry, who have a, they're in a small boutique brokerage, both of them. And I not very, I'm pretty good at articulating the model for an agent, but I don't really know the ins and outs of how it helps a broker the way Mike was talking. So is there a place where I can go get educated on how our model, you know, would be beneficial to a broker? I mean, I understand a little bit of it, but I just don't feel comfortable like I have a, enough of the tools to speak on it. Yeah, Mark, thanks for the question, man. This is actually a, a quick and dirty answer. Um, Connor and I actually have a YouTube video on my channel, which has been the video that's attracted all the brokers to my team that literally is Connor and I side by side explaining for 25 minutes exactly the benefits to a broker and their agents as to why they want to come. So if you want to watch that 25 minute video, um, that's basically, and if you want to try and rip off and duplicate it and steal it for yourself, go ahead. Um, but that's basically the Cole's notes of how you can bring over a broker. Um, we put it out there to the public and uh, that should be able to give you all the answers. And if you have any further, just hit me up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Love it. You're welcome. Awesome. Good job. Hi, could you all put right, the link to that broker? Could you put the link to the video on the chat for us? Only if you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody go subscribe right now. I'm already yeah. subscribed. Don't forget to What's set up. up? What's up, Greg? How you doing, my friend? Happy Friday. How are you? Doing great, guys. Good, man. I love you. You're always here, man. I love it. All right, guys. Well, we got time for maybe one or two more questions. Who's hey, Brennan. For the crowd. Yeah, Brennan Doherty here. Thank you guys for, for having us. Just a, a couple quick questions. Um, yeah. So I'm building the list. I have like six, 700 agents now building the list. I'm cold calling these people. That's in, in order to make enough contacts. That's what I'm doing. Um, I'm telling them I'm a talent scout with EXP. Want to see if you'd like to interview with us. Most of the time it's no. Then I go into Brent Gove's script. Have you heard about EXP Realty? And uh so far, it's just been it's been a tough road so far. Nobody wants to see the gospel. And I just wanted to hear if you had any tips on like cold calling and and how that goes. And, and uh, you know, I, I love to what Ian said about making contacts and like trying to help them what's going on in your business. But if it, you guys could speak any more on that, that would be helpful. Yeah, you know what, and I'll just kind of share real quick, you know, cold calling really doesn't work, you know, it's, it, it, it's tough, you know, I mean, you might be able to, you know, pound through, uh, you know, a list of 100 agents and, and uh, you know, maybe get, you know, maybe one or two that are, that are open to listening to you, but, uh, you know, man, build that relationship with them, you know, maybe, um, uh, you know, ask them, you know, hey, you know, can, can, you know, can we maybe set up a time that I could, you know, maybe help you grow your business or, 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 or just find something that you can add more value to before you just start throwing up about EXP. And, and I, I know Ryan Cohen is big on that as well, too. You know, he's, he's all about trying to add value or, you know, hey, invite them to, uh, you know, a mastermind or invite them to, uh, you know, one of, uh, uh, you know, Brian's, uh, you know, clubhouse calls, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, a top leader on there. Just, just invite them somewhere to, to add value so they can put their guard down a little bit so they're a little bit more open now. Uh, to listening to you afterwards, right? And so, you know, cold calling is tough. You know, a lot of times it's it, it doesn't work, right? You know, we, you know, I get spammed all the time too, as well. Um, and uh, you know, I get emailed all the time. Uh, 
uh, about trying to set up a meeting and, you know, people call me all the time to try and recruit me. And it's just, uh, you know, they're not trying to add value. They're just trying to recruit me, uh, you know, over to their firm. And, uh, you know, for one, I'm not going anywhere, but uh, just really trying to, uh, you know, provide some value. And, uh, you know, then it'll be a little bit more easier for you to kind of, you got your foot in the door, uh, be a little bit more easier for you to really kind of start um, explaining a little bit more about why you're wanting to talk to them um, and how you can help them. So that's kind of my thought, uh, Ian and, and, uh, um, uh, Chris or, or Brent or, uh, or Mike, you want to add any more value to that? Yeah, the thing I would say, uh, kind of loud in here with the kids, but uh, the thing I would like to say, you know, or I would share is, you know, EXP recruiting agents, I kind of view it like we, we uh, do our, our lead generation for investment properties, right? So we've bought like hundreds of homes over the years and basically I found there's really two forms of marketing. Like you can be a hunter or you can be a trapper. You really need to figure out who you are because like straight cold calling and pounding agents over and over and over, that's a hunter mentality. And you can do it if, that, if you're wired that way, but it's a grind. I'll tell you, we're not wired that way. We like to trap. We like to add value, throw things out, put things out and wait till people reach out to us. So I would just, you know, for uh, everybody listening is like figure out what value you can truly add. You know, lead with value. Wait until I like to say people raise their hand. Hey, can you tell me more? It's right. gonna make your life so much easier. And you know, like you can you can grind your way, cold yep. calling and do all that kind of stuff. If you're like you gotta be like hardcore and you gotta be wired that way. But most people aren't. And um, so I would I would say figure out what your trapping mechanism is. What is your lead value? Uh, and kind of build kind of start building that funnel with that approach and it just make your life so much easier. Love it. Uh, can I toss a quick one in here? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so what I just want to say is, you know, if you understand revenue share, revenue share is a delayed gratification. It's a long-term play. Revenue share is what's called leverage, right? Leveraging your time, right? If you have to go and sell a property, that's not leveraging your time because you don't make money unless you invest your time. Revenue share and building is leverage because you attract one agent, they go attract more. That's what it is. When you're looking at your approach, you have to feel or think about your approach from a leverage perspective. If your plan is to only grow EXP by cold calling or sending DMs, you have no leverage because your team is only growing when you're investing time into actually attracting people. Whereas if you build a certain skill set that, as Brand alluded to, is valuable, again, the quote that I live by you set yourself on fire, people will come to watch you burn. Make yourself attractive. And when you're attractive, people naturally want to be a part of what you're doing. Right. So look, the biggest thing I can explain to people, because Connor and I still talk to people that have been at EXP for two, three years and can't explain an FLQA or the difference between a self-organized uh, mega icon and standard team structure. So look at understanding the foundation. Go to step negative one before you go to step one. It's Dial in the model, find your unique value proposition and start looking at this as a long-term foundation building opportunity. I attract 15 people directly to my calendar every single week, but that was two years of building my personal brand. If you start today building a personal brand that people you know, find valuable in two years, you can have a business that you never have to touch and is building your six-figure residual exponentially growing all because of the value that you created, which started today. So think long-term. Don't think, how can I get an agent today? Think, how can I get 100 agents next year? Love it. So here's Boom. something that I've been Seems able to help that. people with is every single one of you have a superpower, whether it be lead generation. Let's just go down the list, right? We're all in real estate. We all have niches and things that we love to do. Take what you're already really good at and educate people on how that works for your business. And you'll attract people that maybe need that. The one thing that I always go back to with new agents is sphere of influence, your database, right? Are you marketing to your database? How do you market to your database? Are you doing newsletters? Are you doing, you know, events that are local events that are coming up and they always drop the ball and we wonder why the attrition rate is so terrible. But the number one thing that top producers say is what? I built my business through my database. But yeah. why the hell don't agents do that? Yeah. So there's a, there's a gap there that we have to fill. And that's why Sherrard and, and, and Brant and all these different people that are, that are educators, right? They're filling the gap between agents of what they need. And we have some amazing content at our company. So find something that resonates with you and your niche of real estate and your local market and market that. 
right? If you're a group of investors, right? Talk about that, how you're bringing people in, how you buy, how you raise money. That's what Brant does. He educates people on how he sells hundreds and hundreds of homes a year and how he puts $10 million a year out in private capital every year. Same thing with Sherrard. He built his personal brand. Now he's coaching and teaching people how to build their personal brand. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge attraction piece. So figure out what your superpower is, build some content around it and just go deep. And the people that are attracted to that will reach out. But at the same time, you know, you want to ask questions and, and be mindful. I left a link right here, needs analysis questions. These are questions that I've compiled over the years to put a framework together. So whenever you're talking to an agent, you always have a framework in your mind of where you're moving them through a needs analysis, right? Because for example, I cold called an agent in Austin, but here was my value proposition. Hey, Barrett, I've been following you on Instagram. You're absolutely crushing it. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and I'm looking for great referral partners in other markets. You have a few seconds to talk. Absolutely. That was my hook. I'm looking for referral partners because I refer leads out. I, I followed up with them three months, six months, six months after following up with them. He's like, hey, tell me about EXP. Yep. Oh, by the way, I actually have a lead to refer you. Awesome, bud. So that was how I broke the ice with cold call calling somebody was I was sincere about why I was calling them and referrals is always something that agents kind of perk up to, right? It was just a touch point. I didn't say anything about eXp. Hey, bud, I'm looking for some great agents. I've been following you. We have good energy. We had a great conversation. So now he's on my hot list. I have his name on my board right there. I referred him a lead. Hopefully they're an escrow. I'm going to be following back up with them shortly. So I added value to him and that was how I broke the ice and made the cold call. So love it. But those needs analysis questions are in the, in the, yep. in the chat there. So they're on my drive, click on it, download it. Um, that'll give you a framework of when you're talking to people, no matter who it is you're talking to, it's a, the needs analysis needs to be in the front of your mind and you need to ask questions, probe them, find out, build that relationship. Guys, this is a long-term game. So you build a database of people you're building relationships with and figure out how you can add value to those people and just continue to add to the database, right? It's that's a it. pipeline. Yep. Love it. A little bit old school approach, but that's how I have to take it, right? Yep. That's awesome. All right. Who else, guys? We still got a bunch of people on here today. I know I'm itching to, to go listen to leadership because we've had an incredible... Um, Gosh, incredible, Ron. It, it's, I have to pinch myself thinking about this. So if, if you guys are getting any objections out there from, from agents, um, you know, you've, there's so much nonsense being spread about the company. And the, and the reality is, is we're the Amazon, right? We're the Apple, we're, we're the, the shooting star that it's not going to stop. Like, I, it's hard to say where we're going to go, but I mean, when you do a billion dollars in revenue and we're a publicly traded company, it doesn't matter who has something negative to say. You just ask them that like, Hey, how much revenue is your brokerage doing? How many transactions did your brokerage do in the last three months? Oh, wow. EXP actually did 111,000 transactions. They're, they're, they're publicly traded. Have you taken a look at it? So if people are coming at you guys with negativity, then that's probably someone that you don't want to, be involved with, right? We're, and here's what Rob Flick says. We're looking for people who are looking for us. I mean, think about that for a second. Like, uh, you know, Tom Trong had mentioned, like, if you are calling people, you know, some will, some won't, but someone's waiting, which is very interesting because I've kind of gone back and forth with cold calling and I've, I've changed a bunch of things of how my approach was. And the, and the best response that I've ever gotten through a cold call was what I shared a moment ago. Hey, Barrett, my name's Ian. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm an agent here. I see you're crushing it down there in Austin. Hey, man, I'm really just looking for an awesome agent to refer leads to. You got a few minutes to talk? That's it. Awesome, hey, man. What markets do you work in? What, you know, da, 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 da. Right? And, and that's just a, a great way to break the ice with somebody. I didn't bring up eXp. And then the second time I called him three months later, I didn't say anything about eXp. And then the third time I called him, which was right when I had a lead to actually send him is when he asked me about eXp. And then he actually told me that his broker pissed him off. And he revealed to me that he was paying $75,000 a year to his broker. 
And I was just like, bro, you're an icon agent at our company. And then instead of explaining the icon award to him, I told him a story about an icon agent. It's like, hey, you know what? There's an icon down in Houston, Texas. Uh, Jeff and Amanda White Spear, they actually hit Icon their first year in 2016 when the stock was at a dollar. And if you guys know the history of the stock, right? We, when we joined, it was, you know, 50, 60, 70 cents. But I just said, look, you know, they hit a dollar a share and that they got their $16,000 back in company stock. That's what the Icon Award is. And then in February this year, that 16, those 16,000 shares doubled, right? Because the stock split to 32,000 shares. And then I pulled up, I said, look, today the stock was trading at, you know, $35 a share or something like that. And I said, wow, the money they paid into their broker five years ago is worth 1.1 million. How cool is that? So I shared a story with the guy versus trying to explain the model. And that's something that it, it took some time. So he's curious, he's open. I mean, who knows? Um, you know, I'm going to continue to follow up with him and, and hopefully I'll be the guy that that brings him over. But through some of my personal coaching recently that I've done this year was one of the things that um, that I've been focused on in my mind is not being committed or not being focused on the outcome. Right. Don't really hold in your mind like I got to get this agent. I got to get this agent. Don't get caught up on the outcome of recruiting them. You add value and it will come in, right? I don't know what your spiritual beliefs are, but the law of attraction, the, the law of universal, whatever, your spirituality, right? If your belief level, right? If you remove that, that internal, right? That, that programming in your mind of, I've got to get this person, got to get this person, focus on how you can help them. Hey, what's going on in your business? Here's some tools that have worked for us. Hey, there's some incredible people at our company, one of the last ladies that I recruited, I've been following up with her for five years, five years. I called her one day and she said, man, you're the third person this week that's called me. What the hell is going on? I was like, we're expanding. You, you speak Portuguese. We just launched in Brazil. She's like, yeah, I have family in Brazil. I know a lot of real estate people back there. She's like, all right, I'm open to learning. So I booked a call with her. I didn't send her to a presentation. I didn't send her to a webinar. I got a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with her and I got face-to-face -face and I was like, tell me about your business. I didn't puke eXp on her, even though she was there to talk about eXp. I didn't say anything about eXp. I just said, what's going on with your business? What's going on with your life? And then I said, oh, by the way, I have a, a really big agent coming on our call here in, in, in about 20 minutes I want to introduce you to. That was Elizabeth Riley. So I got her time and I focused on her her needs, her business, her life, the empathy, right? It's the same thing with sellers. When you go face-to-face -face with a seller on a seller appointment, you're trying to figure out what their needs are, right? What's important to them, right? If you connect with somebody on what's important to them, then they might listen to how you can help them. But that's what I did with Shawnee. It was all about her. I didn't talk about eXp. How can we help you? What's going on in your life and your business? Oh, by the way, hey, this is Elizabeth Riley. She's a, a mega producer. She's number one in her MLS. She's a shining star and she's such an amazing person. I just wanted you guys to meet. I introduced them, I hit mute and I just stopped. I just shut up. 20 minutes into that call, all three of us were in tears. The two of them found out that they both have a special needs child and they're both named Levi. Talk about the stars aligning. We ended that call and she texted me like, I'm in, where do I sign up? And I didn't even go through a slide deck or anything. I just focused on her. And then I connected somebody who was a really big player in our company, right? What I talked about earlier is women look up to other professional women and they just like all of us, right? If you're selling 5 million a year and you see someone selling 25 million a year, that is a very attractive person that you want to get in conversation with. So that's essentially what I did. And then from there, you know, she's plugged in. And even she told me, she's like, look, I've been in real estate a decade and this EXP thing is really overwhelming. So it's like, take a step back, right? Okay, what's overwhelming? Why is it overwhelming? So that was another mistake that I made early on was not staying engaged with the people that I brought in personally. I think I probably could have saved a lot of my attrition. I've lost, I think 22 agents over the last five years personally on my front line. Um, and there was, there was a time there where I realized that I, I'd lost my personal connection with my front line. So this year I've just stayed 
completely focused on staying and engaged with my front line. I brought over a couple new agents. I'm mentoring them. I got them selling real estate. They flipped to FLQAs. Um, I'm reaching out to different agents. Hey, can I send you a referral? I had another one. I was like, hey, I have a referral for you. She's like, oh, I just can't take it at the moment. Okay, great. But I'm also reaching out to these, my frontline agents with how can I help you? Where's the gap in your business? I went and paid for a coaching program so I could have content to send to them, right? I, I can't do everything. I'm not, right? We have, we have to understand where our lanes are and then find the things around us to fill the gaps. So. Hey, I Ian, I, I have yeah, a few ahead. questions for you if you have a minute. Yeah, I'm George Kohler. I'm out of Chicago. So I've got a network of real estate agents. I used to recruit and train real estate agents for a referral-based company. So I've got a, a great network of agents for the last eight years. Many of them have already joined me. I've only been here about two months. But several of them, you know, I'm sending them stuff like the stock is going bananas and second quarter earnings numbers and stuff like that, adding value, a few videos we're creating. But would you, I've recorded a 20 minute video. I tried to make it as short as possible. And there's just so much with EXP with compensation and stock and rev share and everything. But I recorded a 20 minute video that just gives high level summary because some of these agents I haven't been able to get on a Zoom with individually. Do you recommend sharing that with people? Should I be trying to get them on a webinar instead? I feel like I'm pretty good at articulating the advantages of this, but what are your thoughts there? Yeah, all great stuff, all relevant. Um, knowing what I know today, what I've learned and what I'm seeing, I would actually take a step back. And this is something that I'm doing in my personal coaching is identifying what our target agent is, right? We all know that agents have pain, right? If you're talking about just average, right? Not the superstars. So I would suggest you put together coaching, training to help agents solve the challenges that they're having. And the people that are gonna be in your life are gonna reach out to you. So instead of having this, <clears throat> this focus of, Yes, EXP is amazing. And yes, there are some incredible benefits, but timing is everything. And if that agent's challenge is getting to that next transaction, revenue share is not relevant to that person, right? So like I have a broker that I did a transaction with just very, very recently. We built a great rapport and now I'm trying to set that next step. I want to go buy her lunch, but we're kind of missing. It's like, oh, we're busy here, here. But she said some things to me on during our transaction that just were like red flags, meaning she's like, oh my gosh, we're just working seven days a week. And in my mind, I'm just like, well, that's, I know she's in pain, right? Because I see the people that we're connected to and the, the types of businesses they have and the people that I mastermind with that we talk about building a business where you're a business owner and not an operator. So my suggestion would be maybe go through and start maybe put together some type of webinar for lead gen, sphere of influence, um, you know, how to handle, you know, offers in this crazy market, how to draft, you know, attractive offers, right? Bring together some content that's relevant right now and market that. Love you're going to get such a bigger response from that. And then the people that you're pulling through the funnel, right? And then it's, then it's like, hey, if there's something that you guys need, hey, click on this link and set up a, an appointment on my Calendly. I'll give you 30 minutes of my time to help you with X. Perfect. That's the funnel I think you should take a step back and focus on. Remove EXP out of it. I mean, not to say don't promote EXP, but I'm saying if you're going to spend time pushing content out, it needs to be content that agents are, that are, that are looking for. They're not looking for how to get 5% of their commission at a 10% discount. They have no idea what the hell that means. It, there's no relevance to them, right? That's like an alien language. Like what? Like whatever. They're just focused on what they need right now. So if you focus on helping people today fill the gap of getting to one transaction a month, two transactions a month. And I've seen our big marketers that have come in the company, the, the Reese's and even Sherrard and all that. He even talks about it. He focuses on filling the gap between what agents, where they are and where they want to be, right? So th I would suggest that. Back to what I said earlier about your superpower. What is your niche of real estate? Like there's some new people in here um, like Jordan. Jordan didn't have a real estate background, but he's got a marketing background. He's a very savvy marketer. So he's marketing to provide marketing solutions for agents and that's attracting agents to him. So Melanie, I see you nodding on that. Well, I want you to talk about that next. So George, does that help? 
That's that's very helpful. I guess I have one other question too. I saw when I originally signed up something to the effects of, you know, EXP doesn't really want us paying for social media ads to promote EXP, but then I see a Sherrard and all these other guys with all kinds of YouTube videos all about it, paying for ads, stuff like that. Is it a fine line of what we're able to advertise to promote recruiting? So let, let's kind of dissect that a little bit. If you look at what Mike Sherrard right now, what his funnel is, what is it? Branding, generating leads on social media. That's a right. completely different product. But he's a very smart marketer and, and he basically took EXP and blended it into his back end. Right. So when he brings people into his funnel, number one, it's about how he can help them generate leads on social media and close more business. And here's the credibility and here's the case studies of everybody that I've helped. Click on this link and jump on this webinar. So if you think about it that way, he's, he's marketing like a coaching product. That's exactly what he's doing. So if you obviously we can't run exp ads right but you can run an ad to a product or a landing page about how to help an agent grow their business regardless of what that messaging is okay that makes that perfect make yeah that makes sense i have one last question i talked yeah. to two big brokerages one had 25 agents one had 30 both in florida neither one i mean like five zooms in talking to amy weaver with exp growth and you know all kinds of stuff and neither one made the jump. One of them, the agents around 80, 20 kind of made sense, but they would lose their, you know, 20% and have to pay, you know, EXP 20 instead of getting hundred percent. The other one was a little different. She had agents on 60, 40, 70, 30. So she'd be losing a lot more. Is there something else I should be articulating for each one of them to encourage one of them to make the jump? Cause I see the pot of gold, you know, not, not even that far, like two years down the road, they just, neither one were, were comfortable enough making the jump. These are some of my best friends that I've been in Mexico yeah. six times with anything else I could have done to dissect a little bit better or sell the value more. So I think that you're just going to have to just make sure you stay in constant communication and take EXP off the table, find out what that pain is because broker owners have the biggest egos they have the biggest egos. Like I have a friend that's a broker. Five years ago, I prospected him like, hey, would you take a look at this? He was like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm independent. I don't know. So fast forward five years, he's in the same spot he was five years ago. He actually has less agents. He has two producing agents on his team. And I've grown to pff, 1,300 agents in the last five years. It's like, but I don't throw that in his face. I just ask him what's important to him. And then he told us like, yeah, it's just the timing and all that. Because what we've realized from the thousands of case studies from every brokerage coming in when they come in and tell their story is they were all in some type of pain. But another thing that I've learned about team leaders and, and brokers is the people that are really, really focused on their tribe and their people that want a better life for their buyer's agents and their listing agents are the ones that see this. And, and, and honestly say, like, I can't offer my people this. This is a better opportunity. So you have to find out if they're, if they're more focused on their bottom line or they really give a shit about the agents on their team, right? Health benefits, revenue sharing, right? It gives them the opportunity. So you're going to have to continue to plant seeds, right? And, and focus on that pain. And then once again, if they have if they are open to a, a consult with another broker or somebody else at our company, that's got a bigger business to have that conversation. It's just going to take time. Right. And you just got to stay in there with that person and provide the salute, provide value. And that's why, and how Mike is actually bringing brokers over is because he's got the number, he's got a relationship with them first. So it's going to like, for example, there was a guy that uh, one of my team members recruited a couple years ago named Jack and Jack is an old school dude. And he used to sell um, franchises for exit realty. So 20 years ago when exit was doing their rise, he was cold calling independent brokers and selling them franchises because he was building a region and he had a lot of success at it. So he came into EXP like, oh my gosh, I got this. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. So we literally got in, logged into broker metrics. We downloaded the the list of the active independents, and he just starts pounding the phone, right? A couple months into it, he was just like, wow, 
like everything is completely changed. Like nobody wants to listen to me or take an appointment to learn about what we can offer them. And the whole takeaway from there is zero personal connection. So another thing that I've been focused on and learning about for my personal coaching is your social media is an opportunity for you to share stories, but also weave in the pain that agents are having. So if you're going to promote something about EXP, tell a story about how that impacted that agent's life or your life, right? I did a post, um, if you scroll through my social media, I've just, gosh, I've been, I haven't been really focused on doing the letter of the heart type of post. But if you scroll back on my social media a couple months ago, there's some big elaborate posts where it, I, I worked on that script for three, four days. I opened up a Word doc on my computer and I was like, okay, I'm going to tell a story here. And I had way more engagement. So instead of just blasting, like I thought about posting the 1 billion and all that, and but everybody's doing it, but it's like, how is that going to impact somebody that's trying to get from five transactions to 20 transactions? It has no relevance to it. So back to the coaching and, and finding out what you're really, really good at right? If you're, if you're continuing to get listing appointments and, and listing houses from your sphere of influence, that's your product. If you're great at generating leads through Facebook and closing four or five buyers every month, that's your story. That's your product. You talk about that. You, you coach about that. You teach people how to do that. And then less, <clears throat> right? We all want the instant gratification. But what I realized is Building the revenue share is a marathon within a sprint. Mike Sherrard said it best. If you know you're going to run a marathon, you're going to pace yourself. But if you're going to run from one side of the room to the other, how fast are you going to get there? As fast as possible. So it's a, it's a sprint within a marathon. Um, but, but what I've learned is relationships and adding value um, to people as much as possible. Same thing. I cold called an agent in Utah. And what's my script? Hey, I'm an agent here in Dallas, Texas. I'm looking for great agents to refer business to. Do you have a few minutes to have a conversation? That breaks down that ice barrier. That it, it, it cracks it immediately. Hey, I'm an agent. I'm looking for great people in your market. Do you have a few seconds? Yeah, sure. So the guard comes down a little bit and I don't bring up EXP. And I'm just looking for somebody that I can build a relationship with. Um, I did that with an agent. She was like two transactions in. She was struggling. I spent two hours on the phone with her and I poured into her. And we've been friends ever since. I don't talk about EXP. We followed up about eight months in, but that's a pipeline that I'm building. I'm trying to build, you know, 50 people that I'm touching on like that. Um, and yeah. that, go ahead. I have, a, I have a question. When you say do not bring up EXPs, when you introduce yourself to them, the first phone call, do you say Ian from EXP or you just say this is Ian? No, I, I don't say EXP at all. But remember, okay. that's, a, that's a different strategy, right? That's, that's a longer play that's giving me the opportunity to meet someone and, you know, add value somehow, some way and build a relationship. So I'm not the creepy guy that cold called them. I'm that cool guy from Texas that was really fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. And that was my goal with when I do transactions here locally, because in the beginning, halfway through the transaction, I'm like, I'm like, Hey, have you heard about EXP? Like, gosh, this is so amazing. We got a lunch and learn next Thursday, man. It's stock and revenue share and da, 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 da. And they're just like, we close the transaction ghosted. They don't text me. They don't call me. They don't answer my call. So it, there's a, there's a balance. Like I said earlier, you got direct and indirect. If you have a personal relationship, you can be a little bit more direct. Hey, have you heard about this company? Have you seen what's happening? Stay where you're at forever, but would you just take a look at this and give me your opinion? Maybe we could be a destination for you in five or 10 years down the road when you're, when you're ready to get off the hamster wheel. Ha ha ha. Right? You can be more direct with people when you have that relationship, but if you don't know them and they don't know you, right? That's where that needs analysis comes in, right? I would say focus on building a relationship and be a great resource. And over time, when the time's right, then you can ask them. But I did that with an agent here locally and I waited too long. Closed the transaction. Can I add something? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm coming from a perspective as a brand new agent. I just got my license like three or four weeks ago and was already signed to Place Inc. And what brought me to EXP was 
the way that Chrissy Ball never even really brought up EXP, but she became my friend first. And through that friendship is where I was like, wow, she truly and genuinely cares for mine and my fiance's well-being. And she has the ability to help us get to where we want to go. Let me ask her some more questions about this. And by her just being consistent, by her sending me, hey, do you want to jump in this Zoom real quick with Connor? Like he's going to do a thing from six right. to seven. Your fiance could watch. Yeah, we'll watch it together. Let's discuss. After that Zoom, after me and my fiance heard everything from uh, agent revenue, health care, uh, the Q2 earnings, um, all that stuff. We were like, this is a no brainer. I'm going to be able to work with like my big sister, one of my best friends here that I've made here in Dallas. And I'm going to be able to be with a super strong team. That's like, I'm on with Mike Sherrard that's focused on social media. And as someone who's younger and getting into it, I'm very experienced with social media and comfortable there. So I don't, I, that's where I see me growing the best. And so I just wanted to validate some of the things that you were saying in regards to relationship building first, because those relationships are a lot stronger instead yeah. of just casting out fishing lines that can all basically get snipped. You have tinsel cord that is never going to break. And so the foundation is going to be stronger. And from that stronger foundation, you can build higher. Yeah. So that's a perfect testimonial right there to a professional that gets it. Cause it, it, it's a mindset, it's a mind uh, shift, right? Cause in the beginning I was just blasting people like, why isn't anybody listening? Cause you know, it was just a completely different deal. Um, not that it's easier now, but I feel more comfortable cause I'm not completely stuck to the outcome, right? I've, I've learned over time. It's, it's more about the person, their needs and how you can invent, help them. Like there's a lady that I met at a new home construction tour because I sell new construction here in my market um, three years ago. Well, I mean, she's my big sis. I'm her little brother, right? We text each other back and forth. This week, I, I put, here's my tripod. I have a bunch of different tripods. I do follow-ups with people with video. Hey, baby, it's Ian. Man, every single time I see a Texas Tech Flag, I think of you. How are you doing? Did you get that last deal closed? Da, 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 da. I helped her with her photography on a million dollar listing. She was so nervous about, she finally got a million dollar listing and da, 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 da. I was like, hey, use this photographer. Hey, if you want that cool purple background that everybody's doing right now, go to this site, Box Brownie. It's da, da, da. She's like, oh my gosh. She was so excited when she got that listing up because her photography had never looked like that before that helped her level up her marketing. So I have actually, um, I have a, a, a lunch appointment with her on Monday. And she even, she called me one time. She's like, man, these guys are calling me all talking about EXP. And I told them if I'm joining the EXP, I'm joining with Ian. This is three years. So I'm just focused on building the relationship and helping her any way I can. Um, but back to what I was about to say, an agent that I did a deal with here, super amazing lady. We had a lot of, a lot of things that were very in common Right. My goal was when we close the transaction, I want them to pick up the pick up my call. I called her like that. You know, obviously on closing day, I'm always talking to the agents that next week. Right. You're always trying to set that next step or set that next time to, to contact each other or go somewhere or do an event or something. And we had a lot of things in common. We had YouTube and this and that investors and renovating. I mean, I've been flipping houses for years, but. I waited too long to approach her about EXP. She reached out to me one day. I was top of mind with EXP, but her coach, I won't name any names, is at EXP, high level coach, reached out to her and prospected her about EXP. Guess who she calls first? Me. Did she join me? No, that's on me. That's on me. I did every right. I'm not, I'm not so stuck on the outcome, but that was a, a frontline agent. And here's the crazy part is I drove down the neighborhood of the deal we did and her damn sign is EXP now on the house that I sold her. So that's on me, right? That was a learning experience for myself. So um, Mel, I want to bring Melanie on because you and Jordan are just killing it. I'm so happy to see you guys. And I even, I even saw you even made a post one time about new agent you know, new to EXP, recruiting people through social media. So will you share that? Cause I'm fascinated. Cause like I said, you guys are building so much faster than we did years ago. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, 
first of all, I couldn't do it without the leadership, like Team Disruptor Wolfpack, everyone is amazing and we have great leaders. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melanie. I work with my fiance, Jordan. Jordan was on the call a little bit earlier. He had to go. Um, today is actually Jordan's one year anniversary as an agent. So Ian, as you mentioned, neither of us had real estate experience, but we both have marketing experience. I got my license probably nine months ago. Um, I didn't know a single agent besides Jordan when I got my license. And my first line will be at 30 today, uh, getting in on that dashboard. So, and I've never sold a single house. Honestly, I don't intend <laughs> to sell a single house. I joined the XP for agent attraction. Um, so yeah, like biggest advice is, you know, everyone has self-limiting beliefs. I have them within myself as well, but I hear people say, oh, I have to be more experienced or, oh, these people have been in real estate for 10 years or I don't sell enough homes or whatever. I don't have a big enough social media following. I didn't use social media before. I joined Facebook groups. I friended agents. I built relationships with them. You know, I built spreadsheets. Like Ian was saying, it's all about the follow-up. Sometimes people initially, they're not ready. But even just three months later, I've had people say, I actually, my 30th agent today, I talked to her like five months ago. She wasn't ready. Um, I kept in touch lightly. And then she reached out to me this weekend and was like, hey, I, I'd like to talk to you about doing the application. Um, so a no doesn't mean a no. It just means a not right now. Um, and definitely like plug into this group, like these Friday calls, Connor's Monday calls. I mean, we have so many resources, Brent Gove, his website. There's a ton of YouTube videos that he has that Ian has. Like we, we are on the best team in the company. We have the best leaders. You don't need to make these mistakes yourself. Like everyone else has made the mistakes. You can just learn from them and fast track your success. So that would be my biggest piece of advice. Well, that's pretty incredible. New license, never sold a house, 30 agents. What's my excuse, right? <laughs> I will say we spend all of our time talking about EXP, thinking about EXP, like Jordan and I, you know, it's, it's like you were saying, Ian, like it's a sprint within a marathon. Our plan is to just really sprint our first lines. Jordan and I are on separate first lines, but we want to sprint our first lines and then just pour into our downline and help them grow. Um, so right now we're doing the sprints and like we wake up at five every day and we're watching agent attraction videos on YouTube. You know, we're when we are in long car rides, we're listening to those podcasts, listening to those YouTube videos. Our, like our life is EXP right now. But I know when we when Pat Hay showed his back office, like I know we'll be there one day. And it's about looking back on these days and saying, it, I know it was all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I was on a mastermind with Scott earlier this week and Scott is a. Uh... Uh, actually, it's Scott's ex-wife, Tracy, is Pat's sponsor, but Scott brought Pat in. Um, and this was in 20, early 2017. They just got started and we did an event in San Antonio. Um, and this was just a training event. It wasn't like an EXP explained or anything. And Scott was telling the story that he and Rob were standing in his living room and the, the, I guess they saw an email or they saw how they were going to make like 3000 bucks or 4,000 bucks. And he said, Rob Flick just started jumping up and down just with pure excitement for making that first three, 4,000 bucks. And Scott was like, why do you think Rob was so excited? Like, because it works. That vision um, of, of what is possible is accelerating so much faster than they ever thought they ever thought they were, they were thinking 500 agents, and their total team in five years. Rob Flick, I think, hit over 700 in his first year. Um, and he and um, his uh, his wife are the number one team in, in EXP. They have 16,000 agents now in their organization. So it's like uh, Rob and Jen Flick, and then Gene Frederick, Brent Gove, I believe Sheila Favorjean. It's, it's interesting. So and here's another interesting thing that I just recently learned was there's only 15... 15 and a half thousand agents that have one agent or more. So think about that. 45,000 agents at eXp have not recruited one person. And we're growing at this rate. Isn't that wild? So, yeah, I mean, it's like uh, I've taken my foot off the gas on my front line. You know, we had a, a baby girl a couple years ago and that completely derailed my, my momentum. But here's the thing that I would say is just, 
stay consistent in building relationships and never stop dripping on people and helping them. Cause just like Melanie just said, cause when the timing's right, then that's when they're going to be open. And then from that point forward, by then you've had the training to know how to handle them. Because another thing too is subconsciously, if you try to close somebody from beginning to end, that's how they think they have to recruit. So if you invite them to a presentation and someone else does the deck or a lunch and learn or, or whatever live webinar, and then you put them on the phone with somebody else to answer all their questions, or you bring them into the cloud, let a, a corporate staff member answer all their questions. That's a different message subconsciously because when they come through the process that way, they're like, Oh, wow, Melanie didn't really do much. She just invited me to connect. <clears throat> so that's something else powerful too. And that's what, we've learned from Rob is if it's not duplicatable, it's not, you can't do it. Meaning that your organization, the duplication of your organization is the most critical part because there are, believe it or not, there are some people at our company that have been building, trying to build revenue share for years. And they're, you know, a hundred agents. Like there was a guy that came in in Chicago and I saw his numbers. I was like, man, five years ago, he was at 120. So what does that tell me? Um, the people that, that he's brought in, they, they're not working together. They're not cohesive for whatever reason. Um, it is what it is. I mean, trust me, there's times when I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh, do I want to continue to do this? Right. That was my hesitation in the beginning was how do you start working on a business where you have no immediate income coming in when then this is your bread and butter over here? So it's tough to uh, stay focused on building revenue share when you, you have to work to pay the bills but you see all these other people crushing it. But the reality is, is this, this opportunity is for every person. And it's whoever digs their teeth in, sinks in, you know, and really goes through the, the personal journey within themselves. I, I really believe the battle is in the mind versus anywhere else. It's like anything. It's like any challenge, like watching the Olympics. Like we can't relate to those athletes, what they went through over the last year and a half to get their bodies ready to compete where they're at today. I'm going to talk about dedication. I have a, a friend of mine who is a, whose daughter is a swimmer who almost made the Olympic team and listening to her stories about how much time uh, she's put in the pool. It'll blow your mind. She's, she hadn't even made it to the big game yet. And she's got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in her training. She asked me one time is like, should I go? Should I continue? Do you think it's worth it? It's like, yes. To be an, Olympi an Olympian is worth it. Keep going. She's like, okay. It's like, you didn't need my validation. You're already an incredible person. She's like, yeah, I just like to hear it every once in a while. This is Morgan, her daughter. But anyway, um, she got recruited by the Navy, full ride scholarship. So she's in the pool with the Navy. But anyway, so I hope all that helps, guys. I mean, there's there's really no one one right way to do it, no wrong wrong, wrong way to do it. But I can say this adding value to other people and other agents, that's always going to be relevant regardless. So it just depends on your approach. Um, and it's Harriet again. I just want to clarify something. Um, um, going indirect, of course, to the agents that you talk about, you're going to be giving referrals or you're looking for somebody, you're going to be giving referrals in different areas. My clarification here, which is not clarity in my mind is um, are you introducing yourself as a realtor agent in a different area? And you're not talking about the brokerage. That's where I'm kind of getting confused on it. I'm not talking about explain EXP, but I'm talking about how the introduction goes. Basically, your name as a broker, as a realtor, as a local agent. What is that conversation? Like, I'm not quite understanding that. So think about this. If you're going to cold call somebody especially real estate agents. What's the one thing that they will perk up with, with a cold call? A referral, because they understand referrals. They understand agents refer business to one another. So for me, it's just simply, hey, this is Ian. I'm an agent here in Dallas, Texas. I'm looking for sharp people in other markets, especially your market to refer business to. Do you have a few minutes to have a conversation? Yeah, sure. Well, great. Hey, look, you know, my team's generating leads. Da, da, da. I don't even talk and they typically don't ask. But remember, the reason you're calling them is to make a connection to potentially refer them business. Now, depending on how that call goes, if there's someone that's just not fun to talk to or negative, 
then obviously that isn't somebody you're going to follow up with. But if you have a great conversation with somebody, you may or may not have a lead to send them. Like Barrett, I didn't have a lead at that moment. Six months later, randomly, I had a lead to send to him. But that was a reason for me to continue to follow up with him. I just built a relationship and we just connected just because our personalities were similar. Like you're not going to connect with everybody. But it's just pretty much simple. That was just something that I did to help get in conversations with other agents. Does that help? Yes, it does help. That's very clear now. Thank yeah, you. It's just, very, it's just very quick. Hey, Harriet, this is Ian. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm a real estate agent here. I'm looking for great agents uh, in your area. Do you have a quick moment to talk? Well, great. Well, hey, you know, what, tell me a little bit about what your business is. Um, you know, do you, do you work the luxury market? Are you working with investors? You know, I'm really just trying to, make sure that I have a right fit for someone when that time's right. And then they'll give you their resume. So it's just it's something that I've done to, to break the ice because at some point your warm list ends and you've got a prospect for new people. So if you guys have ever uh, read uh, Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blunt, that will put into perspective very quickly of how you have to continue to build a, a pipeline of, of warm new people to put into the pipeline. Cause I was listening, I listened to audio cause I can blast through the audios. You know, I get an audio book, I can have it done. And I always listen to the audio twice. I listened to it the first time, the second time I, I internalize a little bit deeper. But one of the things Jeb Blunt said in fanatical prospecting is, you know, amateurs will continue to make excuses for not building the new pipeline, but get upset because their old leads aren't delivering, right? The old leads aren't converting. Cause that's the thing It's like, oh, you're gonna revert back to the people that you did talk, not to say dripping on people's bad, but it's just, it's not right now, right? You, you gotta let people go through what they need. And then the, it's the timing thing. So, right, if you're finding ways to add value, make connections, like even the agents that uh, you do, if you are gonna take that approach, the referral cold call approach, Connect with them on social media. No, nope. send them a friend request. Hey, great meeting you the other day, right? And then you're posting about your life, your business, you know, a little bit of EXP, the problems that, that, that agents are solving, whatever your strategy is, but you always got to keep in mind what the value is to them. So that's just something that I've done that I learned that, that kind of works a little better when you are just dialing. That's something that I've done. And I've, and I've called, I've cold called people and said, Hey, are you open to looking at opportunities that can help you grow your business? And they're just like, ah, you know, but what, what company is this? And then as soon as you say EXP, you're on your heels trying to defend it. And they're trying to get off the phone call. And that's not a good place to be like, you, I just want to be on and off. Hey, I'm looking for great agents to connect with. I'm going to add you to my database. If I have a lead come up in your area, now I have someone to contact. So that's just something that I've done to help kind of uh, build, um, more relationships with agents. So gosh, I can't believe it's uh, almost 11. I'm, I'm glad I, I had a, a 10 o'clock call, but she uh, rescheduled with me. So, so I just had a gap of time and I was like, let me stay on here. Cause I know a lot of you guys still have some unanswered questions. Hey, we appreciate your help. This has been hugely insightful and helpful and you got good juju and we appreciate all the yeah, suggestions. Yeah, you got it, man. You got it. I mean, that's how we all, we all win together. And that's just another incredible thing about this company is just the, the willingness of other people I know you guys are yes. it. like, it's just like, what? Like, wow, why is everybody so willing to help? Because we're all in this together, right? It's not me against you. It's not the competition anymore. Like we're collaborators and partners and it's a partnership. I mean, it really is. Hey, Ian, Thank Ian. you so much, Ian. Thank you so much, sir. You got it, man. You got it, Carlton. Yeah, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, this has been a really power call today. You got it. You got it. Eric, were you going to say something, buddy? Eric's in my local market. Actually, Brant Phillips is his sponsor. And we've done events together. We've done lunch and learns together. We've done business together. We did lead generation together. We, 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 uh, we definitely add a lot of value to each other. So thank you, Eric, for being awesome. Uh, you too, Ian. Hey, guys, y'all, um, let me brag about this guy. He just will bend over backwards to help you, as obviously he is. Uh, and the reason that it seems everyone supports everyone is the better you do, the better I do on my stocks. We're in the boat. <laughs> so yeah. please go out and succeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty phenomenal. It's a, we're, we're, we're actually writing history right now. Um, I don't know if 
many of you may not know this, but um, Harvard Business Review is going to feature eXp Realty as their 2020 case study. Glenn revealed that to us when we uh, interviewed Glenn last year. Um, you know, he's the first real estate brokerage to take the company 100% virtual. But not only that, Verbella is duplicating our world for businesses all around the world. So like Glenn created something that the world has never seen. So he will go down, you know, he, I think Glenn Sanford at some point will be a household name globally. Ian, I, I've talked to several high level people about what I'm about to say, and it's indisputable. They all agree. Um, the platform that we have with EXP can literally take over all the licensed service industries in this country, if not the world. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a clear disruption, um, and you're looking for people that are open. That's all it is. So nurture, love on people, find ways to add value. The agents on the other side of the transactions, just don't club them over the head with EXP. Remember, you got direct and indirect approach. Feel them out, right? Um, and then when the timing's right, hey, right? If they say something that's painful to them, you can be like, hey, well, listen, you know, we have a training on Thursday that's high level producer, right? Remember. The bigger, bigger fish, you know, the, everyone's looking up at the bigger fish, right? So when you got the Franklins um, in, on, on a call that sold 560 million in volume, agents want to hear. So leverage the tools that we have. So I'm going to get going, man. My phone's been blowing up, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll try to chop this down and edit it and get it back out on Team Disruptor so you guys can go back through it and share it with, with your team. So 